Hello. Welcome to the Detroit Experience. I'm an android and I'll be your hostess. Before we begin, let's make some adjustments to optimize your experience. Detroit Become Human is Quantic Dream's best game yet. I actually enjoyed Fahrenheit, Heavy Rain and even Beyond Two Souls for what they were, while being fully aware they had big shortcomings in terms of both gameplay and storytelling. But Detroit builds upon all the work Quantic Dream has done before and improves on it, creating a satisfying interactive experience that tones down the QTEs, turns up the narrative tension and delivers some really great performances. Having played all the way through and played around with its many branching paths, we feel like we've gotten a good handle on how it all works. And so, if you're about to start on the journey to Detroit for yourself, we have some tips for you. Do note that this is completely spoiler free, but the video also includes new footage from very early in the game, the first hour or so. If you do want to go into Detroit totally fresh, bear that warning in mind before complaining in the comments. Okay? All right, then. You can't do that! You... Why aren't you sending a real person? This is Quantic Dream's best game to date, and that's thanks in no small part to the flowchart that you can track at any time throughout your playthrough. Where instead of just giving us the usual vague, your choices matter stuff, Detroit actually shows its workings while the game is still in progress. The flowchart really is your friend, as you can see exactly where choices branched off and led to an entirely different resolution. That's not to say it takes all the fun away though. You'll still have to explore and figure things out to uncover exactly what choices are on offer, but in laying the story structure bare in such a way, Quantic Dream really shows which choices do matter, proving that it isn't just all smoke and mirrors and an illusion of choice. Things your characters do and say really have far-reaching consequences, and take it from someone who knows, those consequences can and do include characters getting killed off before their story is complete, in some cases a lot earlier than you might think possible. With that in mind, always leave a back door and have an exit strategy. By that we mean it is crucial that whenever you have a quiet moment to look around and explore your surroundings, you do exactly that and take stock of what options you might have at your disposal at any one time. Checking a bag or a drawer to note that a weapon is available and or loaded, or simply using L1 to look at a point of interest is sometimes enough to give you more options to act when things invariably take a turn and get action packed. Just like in other narratively driven games, unlocking an additional piece of knowledge or dialogue or action is usually the most helpful choice when it comes up as an option. But it may not always lead to the conclusion you want, so even if it is available, think carefully about whether it's the direction you want your particular story to go in. And bear in mind that seemingly negative outcomes aren't always. They might unlock interesting options elsewhere or in another thread. And one more thing. Sometimes you may end up being presented tasks and optional extras that don't seem particularly beneficial or relevant. But you can never be too sure what will be brought up again later on down the line. Always keep your eyes and ears open, as no detail is ever too small. Reading is fundamental. Strewn throughout the game are various reading materials that provide greater flavour and context for the world Detroit is set in. These tablets, usually represented as a magazine or newspaper article, not only present interesting questions about the morality of future tech, like whether it can be used to spy on people or whether using androids for sex is dehumanising, but they also heavily hint at names and events that become important later in the game. In fact, paying attention to text articles and to other little bits and pieces in the world can often be super important to navigating situations that crop up much later on. Seriously, it could even mean the difference between success and failure. The game won't always tell you when you've uncovered a piece of information that could prove useful later on either, so pay attention. If you make a choice to do a thing, especially while under duress, stick to it. 
The game likes to test your resolve from time to time, putting you in stressful situations on top of stressful situations. But generally speaking, if you keep your cool and don't panic, things tend to work out. That's mostly with regards to working under unexpected pressure, but it also goes for sections of the game where time is short by design, and it tells you to complete a number of tasks within a specific time limit. Acting quickly and decisively will mean a higher chance of things working out in your favour. And if you are pressed for time, using the R2 button to figure out the quickest way to your nearest objective will help you work as efficiently as possible. It's common sense, but it does bear saying. Run around like a headless chicken and you won't get things done. Speaking of that R2 button, think of it as your new best friend. It's like instinct vision in that it'll highlight any place or person of interest or an interactable item. Annoyingly, it also highlights reading materials and doesn't get rid of the symbol once you've actually read them. So that's guaranteed to wind up the completionists and perfectionists out there, myself included. However, though it's easy to become over-reliant on the R2 button, remember that it doesn't always highlight everything important, just things that are relevant to the current task at hand. So there are other things you may be able to look at or interact with that may actually prove useful, but the game won't lead you directly to. It wants you to do some sleuthing all by yourself, in other words, and we like that. With the exception of a few tasks, you're also fully at liberty to not use the R2 button at all, if you just want to take your time and explore the world through your own eyes. Remember that Detroit is a branching experience, meaning you will not be able to see all variations of the story in a single playthrough, and you may have to play several times in order to find all the answers to any questions you have about the story. But Quantic Dream has said that no question, except one, is left unanswered, and all characters should have a sense of closure by the end of the game. You just may not see them all first time around, depending on how you play. Sony has said that playing all branches could take up to 40 hours, with many choices you make having significant consequences later in the story, including choices made in the very first scenes. Your relationships with the other characters are also tracked and can significantly affect the story. But most importantly, there is no right or wrong way to navigate the experience. There's only your way. So I guess one thing I would say to myself if I could go back and play it from the beginning again is, don't be afraid to play your three characters differently, with different morals. And the game isn't always completely black and white with how those characters progress either. Some characters I was determined to play a certain way right up until a specific moment in the story which completely altered my outlook for them. I hadn't counted on them actually growing and changing as the story progressed, which I guess is a good sign. You might think you're playing as strictly good and or bad, but it actually isn't that simple. And that's a credit to the storytelling and world building really. Finally, if you get an outcome you really, really don't like, you can quit and go back to the main menu to select the chapter you want to change, and simply play on from that point. Quantic rightfully advises that this probably isn't the best way to experience the game. You might want to have one straight playthrough and then go back to play whatever chapters you'd like to see different outcomes to. That's also a much more time efficient way of seeing everything the game has to offer too. But hey, again, bear in mind. There is no right or wrong way to play the game and it is your game, right down to the way you want to play it. So if there's something you immediately regret, don't feel bad about shaping things the way you want. Honestly, there were some decisions in Detroit I forced myself to stick with and one I did change, mostly because it was a choice I had decided that particular character would make but then didn't really take into account how much my interpretation of that character had changed over the course of the game. And I don't feel bad about it. because the original choice didn't feel true to the motivations I had chosen and I would have spent the rest of the playthrough thinking about that regret and wondering how things might have been. You do you, in other words, and just enjoy the ride. Speaking of, don't forget to take this survey in the main menu too. It poses all sorts of interesting questions about the use of advanced artificial intelligence and what it means to us as humans. I filled it out before the game went live and I can't wait to see how the answers change as more and more people's opinions are logged. 
one to keep an eye on for sure. A deserted island and could only bring one object. What would it be? Where the fuck you going, Tin Can? Hmm? No kidding. Hey guys, check it out. We got one of those tin cans here. Are you picking up Detroit Become Human? What do you think of it and how do you plan to play it? Let us know in the comments and if you'd like to see Johnny and I play through the first hour of Detroit, you can click on the video on screen now. Or check out one of our Late to the Parties on another Quantic Dream game. Like if you enjoyed this video and maybe think about subscribing as we have more Detroit videos coming up in the next couple of days. Thanks for watching. Bye.